What is the key to a successful sales funnel? Well, it's not the products that you offer. It's not the services that you offer. It's not the price points that you offer. The key to a successful sales funnel is your mailing list. And that might seem a bit odd, but think of it as the start of your sales funnel. Because without a mailing list, nothing else happens. So why is your mailing list so important? Well, first and foremost, it enables you to keep in regular contact with your prospects and customers. You know the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. So if you're not in regular contact with your prospects and your customers, they're likely to forget all about you and they're going to go and purchase from somebody else. So you're going to lose out to the competition. Now you're going to need more than one mailing list. And that's because once someone makes a purchase, you want to move them from the prospects list to the customers list so that you know that people who have already bought from you are going to have more trust in you. So you're not going to have to sell quite as hard to them as you do to the prospects who've only got your freebie. And there are some marketers who go even further and have a separate list for each stage in their sales funnel. So once somebody has bought the low or a mid price product, they get moved on to a separate mailing list and they start being offered the high price products. And then when they bought those, they moved on to the higher price products list and so on. So at each stage of the game, they're moved over so that they only get offers that are more expensive and offer better value for money. OK, now let's just take a look at how the whole process works. And I've put together a diagram that explains it. And it works a bit like this. First thing that happens is a prospect visits your website and orders a freebie. So they go to your squeeze page, as it's called, and uh, they get the information and they enter their name and their email address in. and that gets added to the mailing list. So then they get sent the download link to the freebie and they've got the uh, freebie and they should be happy. Then the prospect is sent lots of useful information. Now this is part of the process that a lot of people get wrong. They think that all they have to do is keep hitting their mail list with sales information with sales things you know buy this buy my product buy this product buy this affiliate product and it turns people off so what you want to do is you want to make sure that people know that they're going to get a lot of information from you for free in addition to the freebie that they've been sent and exactly how often you send this out is going to depend on your niche is going to depend on how you operate but as a a sort of um, a general rule you want to send probably two or maybe three pieces of free information to your list for every one sales email that you send so once that's done your prospect is sent information about your low priced product so you send that with the sales link now if they buy and to be honest, most people won't buy on the first contact for an offer. You keep them on the prospect list and you send them information about affiliate products and other low price products until they actually make a purchase. And of course, you keep sending them all the useful information as well. So then you get to the point where the prospect actually does buy something. So when that happens, the customer, which is what they now are, is removed from the prospect list and added to the customer list. Now, some mailing systems will do this automatically. On others, you'll have to do it manually. It just depends uh, which system you're using. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Then, of course, the customer gets sent 
useful information. Same sort of rate. And of course the customer then gets sent information about your high price products and also about affiliate products at the same sort of price range. And again you just simply rinse and repeat all the way through your sales funnel. So this is an ongoing process that uh, keeps going on for every stage in the sales funnel that your prospect or customer is at. Now the key to working your mail list and sending all these emails out are programs called autoresponders. And an autoresponder enables you to send automated emails to your list. So you don't have to email each customer or prospect individually. The software takes care of it for you. And you can set it up to send emails on certain dates or so many days after the last email. And you can also send one-off emails to your list. And some popular autoresponder companies are Aweber, which you can find here at aweber.com. GetResponse, which you'll find here at getresponse.com. And MailChimp, which you'll find here at MailChimp.com. Now, each of them have different pricing structures and are slightly different in the way that they operate. But the basic principle behind all of them is pretty much the same. Now, one thing that you'll need to decide at the beginning of your dealings with an autoresponder company is whether you want double or single opt-in. Now, let me explain the difference between the two. With single opt-in, the prospect gets added to your list without any verification. Now, you'll get more names on your list that way, but not all of them will be genuine. Some people will put in a fictitious name, a fictitious email address just to get your freebie. They don't want any follow-up emails, so you don't know whether it's a genuine email. Also, it leaves you open to accusations of spamming because somebody might maliciously sign somebody else up to your list. They get hit with all sorts of emails from you that they haven't asked for and then they complain and you're branded a spammer even though you're not, you're a legitimate business person but you're going to be branded a spammer because this person has not asked for the uh, information to be sent. So these days double opt-in gets to be pretty much the default setting. And what happens with double opt-in is the prospect gets sent an email with a confirmation link to click. So they don't confirm, then there are no further emails. And you don't get quite so many names because some people can't be bothered to confirm. But if you don't get any spam complaints either, because you know that it's a genuine address, you know that the person has uh, asked to receive the emails from you and has confirmed, and if they complain, you can go back with some systems and look it up and see, oh, well, you signed up on X date and you confirmed on Y date, so therefore it's not spam and you can prove it. So that really sort of uh, covers your backside, so to speak. And as I said, double opt-in is becoming the default settings for most autoresponder companies. In this video, I want to talk about traffic. Because generating traffic is the start of your sales funnel. Without traffic, nothing else happens. So you want to get people to your squeeze page to sign up for your freebie, sign up to your mailing list, and then everything else can flow from there. But if nobody actually comes to your page, if there's no traffic, it doesn't matter how good your products are. It doesn't matter how well thought out uh, your sales funnel is. Nothing is going to happen. It's just going to simply wither and die. So let's talk about different ways that you can get traffic to your website. Perhaps one of the best ways and certainly one of the most efficient ways of getting traffic to a squeeze page is via solo ads. Now the way solo ads work is 
you pay a list owner, another mailing list owner, someone in your same niche, to send an email to their list advertising your freebie. And then people go to your squeeze page and sign up. And this works because it's super targeted. The people on the list are going to be in your niche and they're going to be interested in your giveaway. It's probably the most cost effective form of advertising if you're just starting out. Now, if possible, and this isn't always possible because it depends on what type of uh, mailing list software the uh, person who owns the list that you're buying into uh, has got. But if possible, you want to try and split test your ad. So you want to have two different versions of your ad sent to selected portions of the list. And then you want to see which one converts the best. And so you can then roll out that message to the entire list and you'll know that uh, you're going to get a lot of good responses that way. Now, as I said, it isn't always possible to do that. It depends on the list owner. But if you can do it, it's best to do it. Okay, where can you find list owners who sell solo ads? Some good places to look are the classified ad section of the Warrior Forum, which you'll find here at warriorforum.com forward slash warrior hyphen forum hyphen classified hyphen ads. And the Warrior Forum is a forum for marketers. So you can connect with other marketers and you're going to find lots of people on this site who have lists who will be prepared to sell you a solo ad. So you can look at all sorts of different niches from this site, from marketers on this site. Another good place to look is on Facebook, and in particular this group, which is Solo Ads Testimonials. You can find that at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Solo Ads Testimonials. And you can see here where people give feedback on solo ad vendors that they've used and it's a good place to find people who let their lists out for solo ads. Another way to drive traffic to your website and to your squeeze page is via social media. And when I say social media, I mean sites like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn and more. Now, a couple of caveats here. First and foremost, realize and be aware that it does take time to build a list using social media. It's not going to give you the sort of instant traffic that you're going to get via solo ads. And you must be careful not to violate the network's policies. Some social media networks are more open to this sort of use than others. Now, regardless of what social media network you're targeting, probably the simplest way to drive traffic to your squeeze page is to have that squeeze page as your website in your profile. Lots of social media networks will want you to fill out a profile and there will be a space there for you to put your website URL in. Well, if you put your squeeze page there, when people want to find out more about you, they go to look at your profile, they see the link, they click it, and they're taken to your squeeze page and they can sign up. The way that social media sites operate and generating traffic from social media is quite an involved subject and goes beyond the scope of this video. And of course, you have to approach different social media sites in a slightly different manner. However, there are some things that you can do on any social media site, like including the uh, link to your squeeze page in your profile, that are going to get you lots of profile views, that are going to get lots of people interested in you and curious about who you are and what you do and that sort of thing. So a few good rules of thumb, regardless of the social media network, is to first of all, Follow lots of people in your niche. Make sure that you're on lots of different lists. And post great content to your social media site at least twice a day. And it shouldn't be too salesy. It should be 
you know, participating in the discussion that's going on on the social media site. You also want to share your chosen social media page on your website. You know, you could have a little thing that says, follow us on Facebook or visit my Google Plus profile, that sort of thing. And you also want to promote your social media page on any marketing material. So you want to have it on your business cards, on posters, on offline ads, on internet ads, etc. Similar to social media sites are forum sites. And forum sites are probably better than social media in lots of ways because they tend to be very niche specific. So you find that there are forum sites that are aimed only at specific industries or specific interests. So what you can do on a forum site is First of all, you can have the link to your squeeze page in your profile as before. Uh, the same things apply as on social media. But you could also have a link to your squeeze page in your SIG. And this is a good example of a forum SIG. This is on the Warrior Forum, which is an internet marketing forum. But you can see I can click on these leads here and get taken to this person's uh, website very easily. Now, some um, forums will let you join as a free member, but you have to pay in order to have a SIG link. Others will let you have a SIG link right away. Some you have to be at a certain level to have a clickable link in your SIG. So you need to check with the forum to see exactly what their policies are. Another great site for driving traffic to your website and to your squeeze page is YouTube. Now, one tactic that you can use on YouTube is to make a short video extolling the virtues of your freebie and then have a clickable link below it in the box on YouTube where you're able to fill out the description. You can simply have a clickable link so that people can watch your video, click the link, and go to your squeeze page. Now, one thing that you should not use to drive traffic to a squeeze page at the start of your sales funnel is Google AdWords. Now, years ago, this was a 100% guaranteed way to get people to sign up. You would have a compelling Google AdWords ad which would direct people to your squeeze page and then they could sign up and although there was a cost involved you knew that you were going to get your money back because you were you know effectively paying so much a name then google changed their policies and this became strictly forbidden and anybody who did that found that immediately their AdWords account was shut. They were banned from using AdWords forever, and it just made life very, very difficult. So of all the different methods, one that you should not use is AdWords. So there you go, just a few ways that you can get traffic to your squeeze page and to start the uh, whole process of getting people onto your list and into your sales funnel. When you reach the point on your sales funnel where you're selling your higher priced products and services, you're going to be selling smaller numbers, but you're going to be making bigger money. Now, this level comes pretty much the, um, the penultimate level to your sales funnel. So people have downloaded your freebie. They've bought your lower priced, mid priced and high priced items and now you're going to offer them something that's quite expensive but is very very good quality and two types of products are popular at this level one is telephone coaching and the other is a masterclass now telephone coaching can be one-on-one -on -one, or it can be group calls, or it can be a combination of both. So, for example, you might have a group call where you're speaking to a lot of different people on the call, and then you open up the lines to have Q&A at the end of the call so that people can then ask you questions and everybody can hear the answer. 
Now, one thing that you want to do beforehand is to send out a questionnaire so that you can tailor the calls to suit the wants and needs of the participants. And then you structure the series of calls so that they follow an agenda and you can guide the participants towards achieving their goals. And something else you can do is you can record the calls and offer the recordings as a bonus. You can offer them for MP3 downloads, etc. Or you can offer this as a downsell to people who don't want to or who can't afford to participate in the calls themselves. Now, you won't sell as many of these as your other cheaper products. So make a virtue out of this by limiting the number of participants and creating scarcity. Now, there are lots of pros and cons to doing um, telephone coaching. And it's not for every niche. For example, if you're in the fitness niche, doing um, a telephone conferencing probably isn't going to be a good idea. But for a lot of niches, it is a very good thing to do. But let's just look at some of the pros and cons. Now, the pros. First of all, there's low overheads. It's just whatever it costs to hold the conference calls. And there are various services out there that uh, offer them. And you can also do them via Skype and uh, other methods that way. So there's very little financial outlay. It's just your time and your knowledge. Now let's look at the cons. First of all, it's time intensive. You have to tie yourself down to a specific number of dates and times. So you do have to schedule that into your diary and that might intrude on other things. Then there are time zone problems because you're going to have to try and find a time that is acceptable to most of your customers when they're mostly going to be able to get on the call. And that can be difficult because, for example, if you're in a hobby niche, you might want to do the calls in the afternoon after people are home from work or in the evenings. And let's say you're in New York. Well, it's going to be um, afternoon or evening there, but it's going to be during working hours in California and it's going to be during the middle of the night in Europe. So you're going to have problems there getting people uh, to be able to listen in. And finally, you must really know what you're talking about because you can't fake it when someone asks you a question in Q&A and you don't know the answer or you just waffle. So you really must know what you're talking about. And if you're not an expert at the subject, then this isn't something that you want to get involved in. Now, let's look at some resources that you can use for um, telephone coaching. Exactly what conference call provider you use is largely going to depend on what country you're in. So my best advice would be to do a search in Google for conference calls and you'll find there's lots and lots of different providers. And the features and prices vary. So it's a good idea to just simply go through and check them out and see which ones best meet your requirements. You can also do conference calls on Skype. They call them group calls. And of course, these are free and over the internet. And you can read more about it and download the software from Skype.com. Now, similar to telephone coaching is holding a masterclass. And this can be approached in a similar way to telephone coaching, except that you deliver everything in one go. Now, like with telephone coaching, you can record the event, but this time on video, and you can offer it as a bonus or as a downsell. And just like over the phone, you can have Q&A afterwards. Now, just like with telephone coaching, there are some pros and cons to doing all this. The pros is, of course, it's higher perceived value. People actually get to see you in the flesh. And you can get it all over in one go. And you can hold several of these over the course of a year in different cities or countries. Uh, the cons, of course, well, there are much higher overheads. There's the venue costs. You've got travel costs, etc. 
Uh, there's limited capacity, so you need to make sure that you sell all of the places in order to turn a profit. And of course, it's harder to reschedule if something unexpected crops up. But regardless of which one you do, and there are others as well that you can have at this level, once again, you want to make sure that you offer overwhelmingly high value so that you over deliver so that people feel that they have definitely got their money's worth. You've now reached the expensive end of the funnel. Right down at the bottom here, people have downloaded your freebie, they've bought all your lower, mid-range, high and higher priced products or services and now you've got a position where you can sell them something that's quite expensive. And most likely this is going to be a service at this stage and one offered by you or perhaps by other people within your organization. And this can either be a one-off or more profitably it can be an ongoing service that you're going to offer on a continuous basis. And at this sort of level, the most popular offerings are one-on-one -on -one coaching or mentoring and consultancy. And coaching can be done either in person or over the phone, and you can offer email support too. And it's tailored specifically to the needs of the client. And it involves a lot of interactive two-way communication. So if you're in a business niche, then people can telephone you or email you and get your advice on things that they're doing in their business. And you can coach or mentor them all the way through the process. Um, and if you're in the fitness or sports niche, this might mean offering your services as a personal trainer or as a coach to a professional athlete, that sort of thing. But you're going to charge a premium price because they're going to have your time exclusively for however long has been agreed. Now, if you're doing consulting, then you're generally going to be helping organizations to improve their performance rather than individuals. And what you'll do is you'll analyze the problems that the organization has and you'll draw up plans for improvement. You'll then work closely with them to implement the plans and you'll tweak the plans where necessary. Now, in either case, you might be paid on a per session basis, an ongoing basis, or you might be paid a retainer. The overheads are low, it's just your time, and clients are paying a premium price for access to you, the expert. But even though now you've got somebody at the bottom part of your funnel, or at least one person or company, you shouldn't neglect the rest of it. You still need to keep this going as an ongoing process. So you still need to be getting people into the top of your sales funnel and generating traffic. You still need to be giving away your freebie and updating it from time to time. You still need to be offering low and mid-priced products, your high-priced products, higher priced products. You need to keep this turning over all the time. It's an ongoing process not just a, a one-off. So you do need to keep coming up with products, coming up with ideas, coming up with new services, etc. Which is why by the time that people actually get to the bottom of your sales funnel here, there aren't very many people who are going to be interested in this and who are going to be prepared to pay this much. But also, because you're very busy with all this other stuff, you're not going to have a lot of time to take on a lot of um, consulting clients or do a lot of coaching anyway. So the fact that you probably won't sell very many of these really expensive products or services is in some ways a blessing. But your whole sales funnel, as I said, is an ongoing process and you just need to keep on the whole time through and keep bringing people in, keep it churning over and I wish you every success. Getting your low and mid-range price products right is crucial to the success of your sales funnel. 
Now, your low-priced product is the first paid-for offer that you're going to send to your list. So you want to make sure that it has lots of quality and offers outstanding value for money because that is going to set the tone for what people can expect from you as they go further down the line. So you want to use this to build up people's confidence in you, in your abilities, in the quality of your offer. Now, an ebook is the most popular choice at this level, but you could have software or an app. I guess it all depends on what your niche is and what your abilities are. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you're going to be selling an ebook at this stage because that is the most popular choice. And if you go for an ebook, it should be well researched and well written. And you can draw on lots of different sources for this. You can use your own experiences, and that's probably the best way because you can write from a first hand experience and you can have information that people are not going to get anywhere else. You can draw on forum postings that are in niche forums. And likewise, you can also look at sites like Yahoo Answers. And you can write this book yourself or you can hire a ghostwriter to write the book for you. The ebook should be a reasonable length. Now, by reasonable, I mean 20 pages of A4 or letter size, that sort of thing. Now, really over deliver on this. The idea is that you use this to showcase how good the rest of your products are. And you want people to be pleasantly surprised at the quality of your information. So you want people to think, wow, this is really good. So that when you start sending them information about higher priced and more expensive products, they're going to think, gosh, if they can do this for such a low price, how much better is it going to be if I pay a bit more? That sort of thing. That's the sort of message that you want to send, albeit on a very subtle way. And you want to price it competitively so that people aren't put off by it being too cheap. But you also want to make sure that it's low enough so that buying it is a no-brainer for your customers. You know, sometimes if your price is too low, people will think, oh, it's going to be rubbish, I won't bother. But a high price can also put people off. So if you sell it for something like, you know, $9.95 or something similar, then that's a pretty good price because most people don't think too much about spending $10 or under ten dollars on a product now you're not looking to make much of a profit here just enough to cover your expenses and break even your profit is going to come further down the sales funnel now let's just take a look at some resources that you can use for creating your ebook if you're going to write your ebook yourself, then some good software to get is either OpenOffice from OpenOffice.org or LibreOffice from LibreOffice.org. These are software packages, office suites, basically, that are similar to Microsoft um, Office, but they are free and open source, and they will run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And they also have the advantage of being able to create a PDF straight from within the software. If you want to outsource uh, the creation of your ebook, then a good site to look on is Freelancer, which you'll find here at freelancer.com. And at freelancer.com, you basically put your job out to tender and people bid to work on it. If your typing speed isn't particularly quick, then you might also want to look at getting Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is a voice-to-text software. It is actually quite expensive, but it's well worth getting because I'm sure, like most people, you can probably speak faster than you can type. And you can find out more at nuance.co.uk forward slash dragon forward slash index dot htm. 
And the next step along is your mid-range item. This is an item that's going to be slightly more expensive than your lower priced item. And you can actually use this as an upsell from your lower priced product. You see, once people are in a buying frame of mind and have made one purchase, it's easier to get them to make another. And a good option is a video version of your ebook. You know, this can contain the exact same information as your ebook, only in video form, or you can embellish it with additional information to add even more value. And if you're in the software niche, for example, you can write an instruction manual for a particular piece of software and then do a video demonstrating how it all works. Now, people will watch the video to see what to do, but they'll keep the ebook handy to refer to as they use the software because you have to watch a video from the beginning to the end, but you can flip through a manual or scale through an ebook in order to find the bit of information that you want. So people can watch the video, see how it's done, and then when they try it and perhaps it doesn't work properly, they can go back to the manual to easily find the information that they want. And the two can work together that way. Now, your videos should have fairly low production values graphics and a voiceover, screen capture and a voiceover, or a combination of both. Now let's just look at some resources that you can use to make your videos. Some of these are free, some you have to pay for, uh, but they're all ones that I've actually used personally. Some good resources for creating videos, especially uh, graphics and voiceover videos, are Open Office, which is openoffice.org, and LibreOffice, which is libreoffice.org, like we were discussing earlier. And I actually use LibreOffice in press to make the slides in this video. Or, of course, if you want the granddaddy of them all, you can get a subscription to Microsoft PowerPoint, which you can find out more about at products.office.com. To record the videos, probably the best screen capture software out there is Camtasia. Now, Camtasia will allow you to record from PowerPoint. It will allow you to record the screen if you're making a screen capture video. I'm using Camtasia to make this video. Um, it's not particularly cheap, but there is a 30-day free trial at the time that I'm making this video which means you have enough time to download the free trial version and it's fully working and unrestricted. And make your video, put together your product, sell it and make enough money to actually buy the full version of Camtasia. So it is actually quite a good deal that way. And you can find out more at techsmith.com forward slash camtasia.html. Another good piece of software is Active Presenter. And Active Presenter is a bit like PowerPoint and Camtasia all rolled into one. And it comes with the editing software, which is what you really need to put the videos together and make them look good, uh, which Camtasia comes with, but other screen capture software doesn't. But uh, Active Presenter does. And there are free and paid for versions of Active Presenter. I've used the free version in the past and it's perfectly adequate. And you can read more about it at atomysystems.com forward slash Active Presenter. Of course, you can always outsource the making of your video to a professional and you can find them on freelancer.com like we were talking about earlier or on the Warriors for Hire section of the Warrior Forum and you can find that at warriorforum.com forward slash warriors hyphen hire. Now, with both your low and mid-range products, offer a guarantee to remove the risk from the customer. And the longer, the better. Yep. Paradoxically, the longer the guarantee, the less likely you'll be asked for a refund. Now, you can also sell affiliate products at this level. Purchase the product yourself to make sure that it's good. After all, it's your reputation on the line with everything that you sell. 
And once someone has bought your low price product, you want to remove them from the prospects mailing list and add them to the customers list. And now you can start sending them information about higher priced offerings and begin moving them down your sales funnel to areas that are going to be much more profitable for you. How exactly do sales funnels work? Now this is something that causes a lot of confusion. So let me just give you an overview in this video. Now the principle behind a sales funnel is to build trust. Trust in you, trust in your products or services, trust in your ability to deliver on time, and perhaps most importantly, trust in your ability to provide value for money. Now let's just take a look at a typical sales funnel. You're going to start off at the top of the sales funnel with a freebie, a free giveaway to get people to sign up to your mailing list. Then you're going to sell them a lower priced item, then a mid-range item, then a high priced item, a higher priced item, and then finally a very expensive item or an expensive service. So as the people go down the sales funnel, they build more and more trust in you, they're more and more likely to move up to the next level and you can sell them more and more expensive things, expensive items, expensive products, expensive services, that sort of thing. Now let's look at how this works in some detail. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you're in the internet marketing niche, but it's just for illustration so that I can give you some practical examples. In reality, what I'm going to tell you can and does work in every niche, and it works for goods or services, but it works best with a combination of both. Okay, let's look at the top of the funnel, your freebie. Now, your freebie is usually a free report or an ebook, and you use this as an incentive to get people to sign up for your mailing list. So people come to your website, uh, they sign up, and they get this free ebook or this free report, and uh, that's got them on your list and into your funnel. Now, it must be high quality, and this is something very important when you're first starting out and you want to make sure that everything that you provide is of the highest quality. So it must be high quality, and it should be something that you could command a good price for if it were sold. So it's something that has a high perceived value, something that's worth money, but you're giving it away for free. And it should contain useful information that your customer can start to use right away. Something else that you can also do with your free report is to include a clickable link to your website and give away rights to it. And that way, if people share it, then the report can also be a useful traffic generator because people will see the free report that you've given away, they'll see the link to your website in the back of it, and through curiosity, then they come and visit your site. So once you've got them signed up for the free report and you've got them on your mailing list, the first thing that you're going to offer them is a lower priced product. And it's usually an ebook, principally because you can deliver it digitally. Now this lower priced product should contain a lot of information. And it should be a reasonable length. 20 pages of A4 or letter size is a good rule of thumb. Now you want to really over deliver on this because the idea is that you use this to showcase how good the rest of your products are. So people buy your lower price product, they're completely blown away by how good the quality is and so they go ahead and they buy something more expensive from you. So you want to keep the price fairly low but not so cheap as to make people think that it's not likely to be any good. Uh, because sometimes people will look at something and they'll think, oh, that's so cheap, it's got to be rubbish. But where in fact it is actually good quality. So you don't want to make it too cheap, but you don't want to make it too expensive either. 
And usually something like nine ninety five or something similar is a good price for your low price product because after all, under ten dollars, people can not think twice about spending that sort of money. And also, you want to offer a money back guarantee so that if people do buy your low price product and they don't like it, then they can get a refund from you. So there's no risk attached to it. Then you sell them your mid range price product, and this is something that's slightly more expensive than your ebook. And it can actually be an upsell to your low price product. So once someone has bought your low price product, you immediately offer them this mid range product right away and offer them perhaps at a discount over what you would sell it if it were a standalone product. Because you see, once someone has bought something and they're in buying mode, they're much more likely to make an additional purchase. And a video version of your ebook is a popular choice at this level. Now, it should be low production values, just text and graphics with a voiceover. And you can use software like PowerPoint to make the slides and Camtasia to uh, do the recording. And it can actually be the exact same stuff that's in your ebook, but just turned into a video. Now, after that, you're going to offer them a high priced product and this should be not immediately afterwards but after a reasonable period of time because with your high price product well now you're really starting to make money and courses and training products are popular at this stage and these should be a combination of text and video they should be well researched and well presented and again you want to over deliver on all this you want to make sure that there is really outstanding value for money and these training courses should have higher production values than your ebook and your previous videos and you also want to include plenty of bonuses to add even more value then the next stage in the sales funnel is the higher priced product. And again, this is a much higher price point than the, uh, the previous items. And the thing is, you'll find that not so many people will purchase at this stage. But you'll be able to charge considerably more. So make a virtue of this by limiting availability to create scarcity and add more value. Telephone coaching is popular at this level and this can be a group conference call or it can be individual coaching. And what you can do is you can record the calls and offer the recordings as a down sell. So you can record them in MP3 format and then sell that as another product as a slightly lower price to people who perhaps didn't want to spend the money on your high price product or the people who perhaps couldn't afford it but they can still get the benefits from that but it's just simply not live and they're not actually talking to you they're just listening to the recording and then finally you have your expensive product or service and this is the end of your sales funnel so you'll probably only sell one or two of these but you can charge a premium price. And because this will likely be time intensive, you won't be able to offer this to too many customers anyway. Popular choices at this stage include mentoring, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and ongoing consultancy. Now, you have to bear in mind that people will drop out at every stage it's called a sales funnel i suppose a sales colander would be perhaps a better description because a lot of people are going to uh, only sign up for your freebie a lot of people are going to buy just your lower priced items or your mid-range items so you may find that you hit a plateau you may find that nobody is going to buy your more expensive stuff 
So you might find that you've got a good market just selling the uh, lower and mid-range price items, which is fine. You know then that you can keep churning out these products, keep churning out these services for that particular market over and over again all day long. So your sales funnel will build and as it goes along, you can put your prices up and start to make even more and more money. And basically, that's how a sales funnel works. Now, let's just take a look at a typical sales funnel. You're going to start off at the top of the sales funnel with a freebie, a free giveaway to get people to sign up to your mailing list. Then you're going to sell them a lower priced item, then a mid-range item, then a high priced item, a higher priced item, and then finally a very expensive item or an expensive service. So as the people go down the sales funnel, they build more and more trust in you, they're more and more likely to move up to the next level and you can sell them more and more expensive things, expensive items, expensive products, expensive services, that sort of thing. Okay, let's look at the top of the funnel, your freebie. Now, your freebie is usually a free report or an ebook. And you use this as an incentive to get people to sign up for your mailing list. In this video, I'm going to talk about your free giveaway, or often known as your freebie. And your freebie is the first rung in your sales funnel, the first part of your sales funnel, the thing that you're going to use to entice people to sign up to your mailing list so that you can send them information and send them information about your paid for products and services. A free report is the most popular giveaway. And that's what I'm going to be mainly concentrating on in this video. But you can also give away an app or a screensaver. If you do that, if you do give away some sort of software, then just make sure that the file size isn't so large that it uses up all of your bandwidth. Regardless of what you use, there is going to be some sort of investment uh, that you're not going to recoup right away. So you want to keep the cost down. But think of it more as a loss leader than an expense. Now, if you do give away a free report, the report should contain a lot of useful information that the prospect can use right away. So make sure this information is up to date. And the report should be good quality and it should be well written. So if you're not confident of your own abilities as a writer, then you should hire a ghostwriter to write the report for you. And the report should be of sufficient quality that you should be able to charge at least $9.95 for it if it were to be sold. Now, of course, in order to make sure that your report is up to date, you want to make sure you have a lot of information to go in it. So where do you find this information? Well, of course, probably the best source of information for your free report are your own experiences. And that guarantees that the report will be unique. But if it's in a niche that you're not overly familiar with, there are some other sources of information. Forum sites are a good place to look. When you look at the sort of questions that people are asking on forum sites, the sort of discussions that are going on, you can often glean a lot of information from those. Yahoo Answers, again, that's uh, another good place to look for information because people are posting questions. And it could well be the sort of questions that people in your niche are asking. And then you can go in and see what the answers are that other people who are perhaps more knowledgeable about the subject than you are have actually put in. And then you can base your report on those. Product reviews on Amazon.com are always a great place to look for information, particularly if your report is, say, on a software product or it's on some other type of um, physical product. Then you can get the feedback from people who have actually bought and used the product on Amazon.com and, again, base your report on those. And, of course, the website Wikipedia 
has a lot of information that you can use and uh, incorporate into your reports. Something else that you can use is PLR materials. PLR stands for private label rights and these are materials that people write and they sell and then you can simply rebrand them and put your name on them and put them out. Something else that you can use is information that's in the public domain. These are materials made by the US government, which is all in the public domain. It might be materials that um, the copyright has expired on and so on. One thing to be absolutely certain of is don't make it a blatant copy of your source material. If you're researching your topic, then you want to include information from more than one source. Also, again, if you're researching information, make sure that you're not infringing anybody else's copyright. And that's very, very important because copyright infringement can land you in a lot of hot water. And finally, you should rewrite the report in your own writing style. Especially quite often you buy PLR materials, you'll find that they're written by people for whom English isn't their first language. So you'll find there's lots of typos and rather odd language in it and spelling mistakes and all sorts of other stuff. So you want to make sure that it gets rewritten in your own writing style. And you also want to make sure that the spelling is consistent throughout. You don't want to have US English in part of it and British English in another part of it. You want to make sure that it's the same all the way through. Now, PDF, which is Adobe Acrobat format, is the most popular format for these giveaway reports. And there are a number of reasons for this. First and foremost, it ensures that your report can be read on a wide variety of devices and operating systems. So what you want to do is include a download link in the first email that gets sent by your autoresponder. Now, one way to save your document as a PDF is to create it in LibreOffice or OpenOffice Writer. And this is a free open source software package. And it's similar to Microsoft Word, but it does allow you to save directly as a PDF straight from here in the toolbar. Now, I know that there are some versions of Microsoft Word that will let you save as a PDF now, um, especially the subscription versions. But this is free and you can download it from openoffice.org for OpenOffice and LibreOffice.org for LibreOffice. And these software packages are both free and open source, and they have versions for Windows, Mac, Linux, and so on. Something else that you can do is to include a clickable link to your website and give away rights with your report. Now, what this means is that whoever downloads your report is free to give it away to whomsoever they choose, provided that it's not altered. And this way, if people share it, the report can also be a useful traffic generator. Now, in order to make this work properly, you'll need to update and change the report from time to time. So after you know 500 or 1,000 people have downloaded your report, then you'll want to write a new report and put it up on your squeeze page so anybody who gets the old report and clicks the link and goes to the squeeze page will not see the same report that they've just got. In this video I want to give you the basics on creating your squeeze page and the squeeze page is going to be the page that you send people to when they sign up for your mailing list. And your squeeze page has one objective and one objective alone and that is to get people to sign up for your list to download your free offer and then be able to receive further emails from you so your squeeze page must first of all be compelling and it must be non-distracting so you want to make sure that they can't explore other parts of your site while they're looking at your squeeze page. So people who come to your squeeze page really only have two options. They can either sign up or they can leave. Now, obviously, you want them to sign up. 
So let's do a crash course on creating a squeeze page. And here we have a good example of a squeeze page. And this is just a simple HTML page which I made using SeaMonkey, which is a free open source HTML compositing software which you can download for free from this URL. And a lot of people, when you say HTML, they go, oh, well, that's so old fashioned. Well, yes, it is, but it still works. And the thing about this is, as I was saying earlier, you cannot do anything other than either sign up or leave when you come to a page like this. And SeaMonkey will do all the HTML coding for you. You can see here's the uh, HTML uh, source. And if we go back to normal mode here, you can get a better idea as to how it all looks. What we have is we have, first of all, a compelling pre-headline that draws people's attention in. Then you have a benefit-laden headline you know, download our free report today and discover an amazing benefit so you would make sure there are plenty of benefits in the headline then you have three columns here over here on the far left hand side you're going to have a graphic about your free report or if you're giving away software you might have a software box here but it's something to grab the viewer's attention, something that uh, they're going to look at. In the middle column, you're going to list the benefits to the uh, prospect if they download their report. So it says here, in this amazing report, you'll discover, and then you list the benefits as bullet points, as many as you can think of. Then over here in the third column, over here on the right-hand side, we have the instructions that tell people what to do. Just enter your first name and primary email address in the box below and our fact-filled free report will be on its way to you. Then you have the sign up box and you'll get the code for this. Let's just go back to HTML code again. You'll get the code for this from your autoresponder company and you can just simply copy and paste it in when you use SeaMonkey it is actually very easy to do Let's just go back to normal again and then you need to have something enticing on the send button don't just have submit because that's a bit boring so what i've got on this one is send me my report so people will fill out their first name their email address and click send me my report and then their report will be sent to them or rather they'll be added to the email list they'll be sent the confirmation email and then once they've confirmed they'll get another email that has the download link uh, for their free report. In addition to sending your prospects to a squeeze page, you can also use a pop-up to get your sign-up box right in front of your prospect. Now, pop-ups have a bit of a bad reputation. A few years ago, you used to get lots of pop-ups on websites, so much so that um, Browser developers like Microsoft or like um, Thunderbird, Mozilla, all programmed their internet browsers so that you could block out pop-ups. But particularly if you have a WordPress site, there are some ways around that. And you can use a plugin to make an unblockable pop-up. And these unblockable pop-ups are better known as pop-overs and you can install them from within the WordPress dashboard. Just go to plugins and then add new and then do a search here for pop-over. And you'll see there are a number of different ones here that you can get. And what these will do, they'll basically cover the screen when somebody comes to your WordPress blog 
with a version of your squeeze page and it lets people simply enter their details there and because it covers the screen uh, you're not going to get any distractions and again people will have the option to either enter their details or leave. There is a lot of confusion around sales funnels and I want to help clarify that in this video. First of all, a question that lots of people ask is why is it necessary to build a sales funnel in the first place? Surely, if you want to sell high-priced products, you just sell them, right? Wrong. While it's true that in the offline world you can go ahead and sell expensive stuff right off the bat, you know, for example, if you run a Bentley dealership, you wouldn't expect someone to buy a Toyota from you first and then trade up. But in the online world, things are different. Unfortunately, there is a tremendous lack of trust online. And it's not surprising. You know, some online traders are sadly less than honest. And online it's easy to deceive. For example, your website might give people the impression that your business is a large operation run from slick offices in the heart of the city, when in reality you're just some guy who lives in a downmarket neighbourhood and works out of his spare bedroom, but of course your website might give a completely different impression. And to put it bluntly, most people you deal with online for the first time are going to assume that you're a crook until you've proved otherwise. And a sales funnel enables you to do this. With a sales funnel, you can establish that you're a real business, you provide quality goods or services, you deliver on time, and perhaps most importantly, that the customer is going to see value for money. And when people know and trust you, it's easier to make sales. And I've heard it said that people will want five points of contact with you before they'll really trust you. But when they do trust you, they'll know that you're not a crook. They'll know the quality of your goods and services. And they'll know that you know what you're talking about. And this is where a sales funnel comes in. You start by giving away something for free. You then sell them something inexpensive, then something more expensive, then something even more expensive, and so on, all the way along. And once someone has bought a cheap item from you and is happy with it, they're more likely to purchase a more expensive item from you. It's just human nature. Or, to put it another way, it builds confidence and trust in you, trust in your business, and trust in your brand. When you reach the high-priced product level of your sales funnel, this is where you start to make some serious money. The high-priced item comes down further down the sales funnel here, after your freebie, after your lower-priced item, after your mid-range item. That's when you're going to start to sell your high-priced item. And in a way, things start to get easier at this level because you have customers who know you and are starting to trust you. And if you've over-delivered on value with your low- and mid-range products, then people will know what to expect. There are two types of products that are popular at this level training courses and software or apps. Now let's look at training courses. When you have your training course you want to have higher production values than your ebook and other videos. That means something like having a presenter talking to camera in the video part and music at the beginning and end of each video, 3D graphics, etc. Something that shows that you have actually spent some money in making this product. Now, your courses should be text and video based, and the text and the video should work together. So, for example, you could have video lessons with a workbook or a reference manual, and the whole thing ties together. 
Now you can research and create these courses yourself, or you can rework PLR or public domain materials. So you can do all that yourself, or you can outsource it to a professional. Now, when it comes to delivering your courses, you do have a couple of options. And the first way to deliver them is digitally, and that means from a site on the internet. Now, when you do it this way, the overheads are much lower. And of course, when you do it digitally, you can update the materials much more easily. The other way of distributing your courses is to distribute it physically. And physical products have a higher perceived value than digital products. People think that because they've actually got something that they can physically hold in their hands, it's worth more than just something that they see on their computer screen, even though it contains the exact same amount of information. So correspondingly, you can charge more. If you're going to distribute your course digitally, then a good platform to put it on is Moodle. Moodle is actually used by a large number of colleges and universities throughout the world for um, distributing courses. So it is actually very highly recommended. And it's free and open source. And you can read more about it at moodle.org. You'll probably need to have quite a lot of storage space to store the videos and the digital uh, documents on, which might overdo the bandwidth that you might have for your web hosting account. So a good storage solution is Amazon S3. Uh, there are free and paid for versions of this, but the uh, free version does let you have quite a lot of storage space and you can read more about it at aws.amazon.com. You might also consider putting it on a third-party platform, and probably the best one out there is Lynda, which is lynda.com, and Lynda is actually owned by LinkedIn now, and there's all sorts of different courses out there that you can use, and you can actually start to uh, drive traffic to your course via Lynda. It's actually quite um, a good deal. If you want to distribute your course physically, then a good company to use is Vivante, uh, they will uh, handle everything, all the printing, all the uh, duplication of the CDs and DVDs, etc., and then send everything out in the mail. They're a US-based company, but they will distribute worldwide, and you can read more about them at vervante.com. Finally, there's Amazon Create Space, and this is great because not only will they print it on demand and duplicate it on demand, they'll also list it on Amazon.com so you can start to sell your courses that way outside of your sales funnel. So it is actually quite a good idea to sell via CreateSpace and you can find out more at CreateSpace.com. Now the other popular product at this level are software and apps. Now, if you decide to do that, your software or your app should solve a specific need for the customer, and it should make the customer's life easier. But also, if you're going to develop a software or an app, you want to make sure that it's not something that's available free on the internet, because people are not going to buy your product if they can get it for nothing or download it for nothing uh, off of another website. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can make the app. You can write the program yourself, or you can hire a coder to write it for you. So if you're not a coder yourself, then it's best to hire someone to do that for you. Now, the process is longer and more complicated than creating a training course, as you have to allow for beta testing, debugging, etc., etc., and digital delivery is the norm uh, for software or an app. Now let's just look at some software resources. If you're looking to outsource the coding of your software or your app, 
then a good place to hire a coder from is rent a coder which you can find here at rent-acoder.com and a good distribution platform for apps and software is CNET and you can find out more at cnet.com regardless of whether you're going to do a training course or whether you're going to make software or an app you want to survey your customers at this point to find out what they want and it's best to do it at this stage in the sales funnel as you can use this information to develop products at this level and also later on now People on your prospect list may just be freebie seekers who are looking to get stuff for free. So they're not really the best sort of people to ask what they want because their answer is going to be, well, something for nothing. So after you've actually got customers, people who've actually parted with money to buy one of your products, then that's the best time to do the survey and to ask them what they want. There's a couple of options when it comes to survey software. The first one is SurveyMonkey. Now this is a hosted solution and you can read more about it at SurveyMonkey.com and there are free and paid for versions. Another option is Lime Survey, and this is a free open source solution that you host on your own server. And if your hosting package comes with Fantastico or Soft Delicious, you may be able to install this from within cPanel. Otherwise, you can download the software from limesurvey.org and install it manually. It's actually quite straightforward. At this stage in the funnel, products can be yours or they can be affiliate products. If you sell an affiliate product, Purchase it yourself first to make sure it's good and to see what the sales process is like. You'll also be added to the Affiliate Product Manufacturer's Sales Funnel, which can give you some insight into ways to improve yours.